It's the 19th, January 2023. 20, Welcome, everybody. I'm Dana Durnford, I'm also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org, and the nuclear industry refers to me as the Gamma Goat. You can call me at 709. 709- 589-4406 the final show of the week hope everybody has a great weekend coming up we got oodles oodles of nuke tart news to get through welcome everybody welcome to the grind welcome to evil international atomic energy agency there's Zero doubt in my mind that the world will recognize the International Atomic Energy Agency as the worst thing that ever happened to humanity. (laughs) The A-10 Warthog only shoots dirty bombs. Is that comforting? They're actual dirty bombs. And your journalists write dirty bombs. You're eating dirty bombs if you're buying food from Japan or food that was bought from Japan, relabeled and shipped to your countries to get around the embargoes. And I guarantee you that is happening. It's an insidious story. We have a poll tonight. Should those 60 and older be prepared to die at the Fukushima plant? How many nuclear scientists said, Mom, Dad, bad news, we got to send you in to Fukushima. It's bad. I'm sorry, I love you, but, uh, you know, you got to go first. We can't use the homeless until there's no nuclear scientist parents left. None, right? Imagine saying something like that. Imagine considering something like that. So how can you have any respect for a government and a country that looks at us elderly that way? How how does that actually work? Because, by the way, I'm 60. And And to say something like that, the people that actually built the country, sacrificed it all, should be disposed of like paper towels. How do you get that kind of contempt for the elderly? And calling them elderly is deceitful too because they're they're the wise ones. They've been through it all. We got that poll much more coming up. Twenty eight percent of the polls said yes, we should send the elderly into the nuclear meltdowns. So what what kind of um, sadistic weirdo considered that as an option? That's pro-nuclear, folks. It's like a disease, and all of a sudden, everybody outside the nuclear industry is a potential victim. You have no idea how correct I am in that assessment. Nuclear power is making a comeback in the stock market in Hollywood. There's there's no stock market comeback. What the hell are you talking about? New scale stocks went up uh, 4%, I think. Nuclear energy is getting positive attention, including a new movie. It's not a movie. It's a mockumentary, um, a propaganda hit piece that Oliver Stone and Joshua Goldstein produced in this pure propaganda. Bananas and potato chips and walking in sunshine. It'll make every journalist proud. Shares of new scale power for been around new scale, which is gonna build small modular reactors somewhere in the next hundred years or so. Has existed for eighteen years, hasn't produced even an actual um, application for the non-regulatory agencies to look it over. And saying they build small modular reactors, how, how did 
somebody who's been existing for 18 years, no hopes of having a small modular reactors in at least 20 years, get their stocks to rise. And how the hell did they get on the stock market with no product to get their stocks to rise 4% out of the blue with no catalyst? Well, the, the stock market is out there pumping uranium stocks and stuff like New Scale to unsuspecting investors who've worked their whole lives. And they're just going to steal the investment. It's a worthless stock right away on top of that. It's a revolting industry. We've been watching that take place now since Fukushima melted down with incredible increases. It's humiliating. Like in all honesty, Uh, 300 nuclear missiles are headed you your way. You must respond. What are you going to do? What are you going to do now? You got 300 missiles. You haven't got time to think. You got to act. Make a decision. Are you going to nuke them back? Let's nuke them back. I can hear the military. Nuke them back. Nuke them back. When the nukes are launched, they'll call their wives and says, "Honey, I love you. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you, sweetie." How does a major media publish a picture like that just to cause you fear? You need to ask yourself questions like that because you don't have a functional media anywhere on the planet. It's not something... There's your media right there, look. You want some finger? Yeah, come get some. That's what a media is. It's a bizarre creature. So this was dreamt up um, at Princeton University. Sharon Wiener and Moritz Kitt, two national security experts National security experts from Princeton saying, what do you do? Do you fire back? Well, like I said, lose-lose anyway. If you fire back, as it stands, your loved ones probably haven't got a future. But if you fire back, they definitely haven't got a future. And if you don't fire back, do you, what's the possibility NATO is going to fire back? Who shouldn't exist. I'm saying it's 100%. That's how stupid they actually are. Think about how weird Hollywood is. Using something that don't exist and it breeds radiation and it excretes radiation and turn that into a Hollywood blockbuster like Spider-Man, which was created by the nuclear industry, and the Hulk, which was created by the nuclear industry, strictly to indoctrinate your children in the increments as they grew up and following generations. And what have we seen happen? Exactly that, right? After years of false dons, can Britain realize this nuclear... After years and years and tears and years of false... Don's Britain can't realize his nuclear ambition. Britain, Britain, first off, what the hell? Their last, at least their last four prime ministers were actually goblins. And now Prince Charles is in charge. He's going to appoint the next prime minister if he didn't already appoint this one. You got to... At what point are you going to admit you got a problem? Because time is running out to admit you got a problem. Britain got 5.86 gigawatts of nuclear right now. And according to Boris Johnson, who doesn't exist anymore in, in any capacity, he's promised to build 24 gigawatts of nuclear power when they don't have an industry to build reactors. They're dependent on somebody else, like France, who can't even uh, keep their own reactors functional. 
Yeah, you know, we'll get to it. Don't worry. We the French. Viva la French. Nucleo could be the, this is Yahoo, folks, financing. The next tech company to keep your eye on. They're going to build small modular reactors for the United Kingdom. Nuclear energy has been a contentious topic for decades. No, only, only the lowest forms of life promote nuclear. Should those 16 and older go to Fukushima to die? What kind of industry thinks that way? What kind of industry demands us even to think that way? Why would you want something like that on your planet? London-based Nucleo, who we've only covered a couple of times, a relatively new company, and after years of hesitation, no, they waited for all the reactors to be old and decrepit and forced to shut down, and they said, hey, we're going to have a nuclear renaissance. And the person that was picked to announce it was the least human in Britain, known as Boris the Monster Johnson. It was his final act of defiant before he got kicked out of Parliament was to remove all the restrictions on food from the nuclear wasteland for the entire country and then, um, you know, glut about it in the media. Yeah, the supermarkets, the corner stores are going to soon be full of Fukushima food. And 14 prefectures surrounding Fukushima, the food was banned in 55 countries for a decade. Boris Johnson's glutting, gloating that the restrictions are lifted. Enjoy your country. Ha 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 ha. Enjoy getting sick and die. Enjoy trying to survive this onslaught of diseases coming at you. Of all the clean energy sources, nuclear energy has the highest capacity to kill you. It's the most resource-intensive industry. It needs two external power supplies, gas, oil, and coal plants dedicated to it to build it, to run it, and 60 years to decommission it. And for, since 2015, they've been using this carbon-free mantra to manipulate you, and successfully, too, to those who are still sleepwalking into this apocalypse. And Oh, and they're going to run on nuclear waste, mixed oxide fuel, but not just any type of mixed oxide fuel. It's going to be high grade. The emissions are going to be shocking. And the fuel, they're going to produce 35% more intermediate, dangerous, very dangerous level waste, 35% more than a large reactor, 30% uh, more high-level waste, which is lethal by the leader just walking past it, and five times more lethal fuel rods that are still splitting the atoms into the environment. How can you start up a country like, a company like that, and look anybody in the eye ever again? If you got the ability, the brains, the education to start up something like that, you could have started up something else, like geothermal, and been much more successful with zero resistance and everybody trying to help you. So why take the lowest road that's going to create the most casualties for all species, not just humans? It's a burden. It's a burden to know the truth. I have to struggle every day with that burden. I'm sitting chomping at the bit before the show starts so I can go after this industry again. Not because it's fun. Not because uh, I don't have a life, which I don't, by the way, thanks to nuclear. But, and I'm absolutely thrilled that I can dedicate my life to something so important. I'm, I'm humbled. I just wish a million people were humbled, too. Because we wouldn't have these issues, would we? The people that are watching The Simpsons, you can't talk maybe a half of a percent of a percent 
of these people are so indoctrinated. Like, oh, nuclear waste is good. Look at Homer. French nuclear hydropower availability down 12% is mostly nuclear. I get, France can't keep anything running. If you want something broke, buy it from France. Which is, uh, EDF is owned by France on top of that. Do you really think that was going to turn out any different than dysfunctional? If you have a, an EMP, this is what your plan is going to look like. Because every reactor is going to melt down at the same time. If you have a big burst of electric energy from the sun, you melt down all nuclear power plants at the same time. If you put all your nuclear in a dump, somewhere in the future it's going to do exactly like that. Not maybe. Why be, why be a zombie? Why not just do something good? You only get one kick at life on this planet. You really do. Wasting it on Simpsons and Spider-Man and the Hulk is not very productive, particularly for the other 8 million species. The table shows availability reduced by 5 gigawatts of 7 nuclear reactors. They're going to have a nuclear renaissance, he announced, in France as way too late to catch up. With something unreliable like the EDF at the helm. With not enough water to cool the reactors that they got. And you're going to build more? 70% of the fresh water in France is destroyed by the nuclear reactor industry. 70% of your fresh water. Unfortunately, in school, they don't teach you that you need fresh water to survive. It's going to be a miserable existence, said miserable Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone slams environmental movement for blocking nuclear power. They're, that's absolutely nonsense. The environmental movement is not out there fighting in the streets against nuclear power. They're attacking gas, oil, and coal. Oliver Stone, you know, there should be a penalty for being evil like what he's doing. There, there should be consequences, should be an incentive not to be evil for people like him. Derail the success and popularity of nuclear power. The most powerful industry in the world. And I got... I don't know. I don't know the movement they're talking about. I have no concept of what Oliver Stone and Joshua Goldstein is talking about, and what the frig are they doing at Davos at the World Economic Forum? They don't. They're, they're, and the World Economic Forum saluted them. Oh, bless you, which is they worship the devil down there. They're, they're not a, a organization of good. Like Nuclear Energy International. They have no redeeming qualities. We got no spiders in the forest on the east coast here or the west coast of Canada. And the research is very, very clear on that. So, like the South Korea's last couple of administrations went this way. So, go back three, three. So they were anti-nuclear. Next one was pro-nuclear. Next one was anti-nuclear. This one current is pro-nuclear. What do you think the next administration is going to be? Because nu nuclear is, you know, they had a nuclear power plant in North South Korea that just opened after being shut down by an earthquake five years ago. Why would you start up a nuclear plant that took you five years to repair from an earthquake. You really think you're not going to have another earthquake? Is that how you think? Should those 60 and older be prepared to die at the Fukushima 
at your power plant when it breaks down. Like, you have any idea how madding, mad and insane that statement? How the hell do you get 30% of the people suggesting that we should sacrifice the elderly for not gas, not oil, not coal plants breaking down, but a nuclear power plant? Doesn't that tell you everything you ever needed to know about the people that are pro-nuclear? That, that shouldn't, there shouldn't be a single yester, let alone 30% of the vote says, yeah, we should sacrifice the elderly with our nuclear plant breaks down, which means you shouldn't have a nuclear power plant, and you shouldn't anywhere on your entire planet. It's clearly obvious that that poll... Hey, maybe some superhero or comic book hero will come and fix everything, Dana, right, right, right? It could happen, Dana. The Hulk is real, Dana. Spider-Man's real. They just haven't morphed. We haven't mutated into one yet, but it'll happen at some point, thanks to nuclear. New Brunswick, Canada, banking on small modular reactors. They don't even exist. You're going to sign a memorandum, a memorandum of understanding so you don't look at anything else, geothermal or any other new technology that shows up. No, no, we just want small modular reactors that actually don't exist. And there's four provinces in Canada that have signed a memorandum of understanding. They won't look at anything, only something that don't exist, like small modular reactors that are ab absurdly evil because of the emissions. And because you're using mixed oxide fuel reused, which is the, the it's actually illegal in Canada to have mixed oxide fuel. It's illegal in America to use mixed oxide fuel. And Americans couldn't even succeed. They, uh, they spent 30 billion in the last decade trying to build a mixed oxide facility. And then they finally gave up on it. They wasted 30 billion trying to build something they, they couldn't succeed. If you look at what France and La Hague uh, uh, mixed oxide facility has done to our planet. Look at the studies. Look at Donneré. You look at three of those, look at uh, Mayak, former Soviet Union, current Russian. This, the only way you can describe it are disease factories for the entire planet. New Brunswick Power wants to get small modular reactors, and but they don't even exist. And that uh, the problem is they got a coal fire plant that's going to shut down, has a measly capacity of 450 megawatts. Geothermal could resolve that in a heartbeat. They have the time to, to build it and get it ready. You can build it at, the, at that coal plant, and when it's time to decommission the coal burner, they just turn on the geothermal. And by the way, you don't need no storage with geothermal. I'm, I'm confused. Every time they're given an option, that uh, real option, they vehemently steer away from and go to the most controversial in the fact that it's going to pollute the whole planet with emissions. Four hundred and fifty megawatts is way doable for geothermal. On top of that, they list a small modular nuclear reactors as the replacement for something that don't exist. Even if you create it, you gotta get the kinks out of it. You gotta re-engineer it. And then you gotta build a new one. And you gotta get the kinks out of that before you can turn it into a commodity. You're talking 20, 30 years down the road. But it shows you the stranglehold that the nuclear industry is imposing upon everybody's future. 
No, we're getting small modular reactors, Dana. And there's urgency. What the urgency means, you need something now, not 20, 30 years down the road, I thought. Maybe I'm stupid. Maybe urgency means 20, 30 years down the road because they're so incompetent, that's the only way they can build something is they've got to think 30 years down the road because that would make sense. Whereas the government's investment in building a small modular reactor industry in the province that only needs a couple is binding it to other options rather than looking at... See, and so when you talk wind and solar, the first one you should talk about is geothermal and then tidal energy because they're predictable for thousands of years. And, and then if they're not applicable, you can think about wind and solar with storage, and I'm not talking batteries. Why are, we, why are we ever talking about batteries for storage when there's 20 better options? When will the world make sense, Dana? Would you get rid of the nuclear industry? If you get rid of the nuclear industry, there's the nuclear industry right there. It's Christina Amapur. If you've been around like us a long time, you know who Christina Amapur is. She's definitely nobody's friend. She's a mouthpiece for the industry and the media. She's interviewing a bigger mouthpiece, Raphael Grossi. It's like interviewing John Wayne Gacy times a trillion. Utility company executives acquitted of negligence, yeah, because they're trying to blame the designer, right, Westinghouse, and General Electric, uh, flaws on the people that happened to be working at that time. Which is like, the reason TEPCO was kept around was so you wouldn't blame the nuclear industry for the death of the planet preceded by the death of the oceans. Hey, if you're not crazy, you don't fit in. Putin's former, the former president of Russia warns NATO, which is 28 countries' militaries, of nuclear war. Well, who's, who, nobody wins, including Russia or NATO. NATO, NATO has nobody to hold accountable. It shouldn't exist. It's like United Nations. There's no one to hold accountable. How, how is that going to be a good idea? So he's saying that if Russia loses, prepare for nuclear war. If Ukraine wins, that's really what's going on. The defeat of Russia and Ukraine could trigger a nuclear war. That's a, that's a billion reasons to hate the nuclear industry right there, isn't it? Because who wins in a nuclear war? <laughs> oh, that's right, nobody. No species. When do we start worrying about the species? 25 questions about small modular reactors. Of course, this is nonsense questions, right? And I got a couple there at a borderline. They're talking about West Virginia's uh, Youngskin, Congressman Youngskin, wants to bring. Southwest Virginia as the first small modular reactor. It's, it's the total bizarre. Where did he come from? Why is he pro-nuclear? Why doesn't he concentrate as a constituency instead of small modular reactors that don't even exist? 
Waste disposal. Well, you don't got you got to have a, a small modular reactor to create waste first off, and right now they're dependent upon mixed oxide, sixteen percent fuel from Russia, and and they're not willing to take it from Russia. So they have actual no supplies of fuel. They got no reactors. Why are we? Why is this part of the narrative all day every day? Right now, there's no Pacific proposal on the table. No, because there's no reactors. What do we know about the safety of something that don't exist since there's no small modular reactors? Well, that's where the conversation is supposed to end right there, isn't it? Why are we fighting about something that's not going to exist for 15 to 20 years? So you don't look at any other technology like geothermal. Why does Youngskin want a small modular reactor that doesn't exist? Because he questions whether an electric grid completely dependent upon renewable would be reliable. And says, well, well, like, he's not an energy expert for starters. And says nuclear is necessary to provide the reliability when there's at least 20 other options that are all better than nuclear. Like geothermal. Why isn't geothermal ever getting any love in any of these conversations? So, and then the same old garbage can diagnosis of the sun doesn't shine 24-7. The weakest argument imaginable. The, the people who regurgitate that are the most lacking in any kind of humanity, any kind of common sense, any kind of Anybody that says something like that should have their children taken away from them. Obviously, they're not capable of taking care of children. TEPCO would be happy to take them off their hands. The World Nuclear News, why, why is that allowed to exist? It's just a terrorist group, right, for the nuclear industry. They call themselves lobbyists, but they're actual terrorists. They're pro, uh, pro, uh, promoting death and disease by radioactive fallout on a prolific, and they never put their names on the stories. What does that tell you? And they lie constantly about the attributes of nuclear, refuse to acknowledge that nuclear has uh, adverse side effects. Oh, that was so good, woo! Look, look, look. <laughs> Let me see what we got here. We got stupid, more stupid. Oh, we got another nuclear power plant surrounded by farms. Is that proof that we're idiots? Is it proof that we're insane? I, I don't know. We need a predator. We need a predator. Start whacking all of these people. We need an alien. Come here and solve our problem. Because we're obviously in, incapable of solving our own problems. And they're going to get their fuel for the Belarusian nuclear power plant is on the Lithuania border from Russia because Russia is funny there's embargoes 10 months 11 months later on everything but Russia fuel now they finally got an embargo on Russia's fuel and the small modular reactor industry can't exist without the fuel and they don't have an ability to make their own high grade fuel America spent six or thirty billion plus dollars. Not really, though, because ninety percent of the money goes to administration. We got some doozies coming up. Holy smokes! Wait till you get a load of what I got for everybody. Well, it actually never stops, does it? First nuclear power data center at Subsahana completed. 
you know, up by Three Mile Island. So it's correct. It's connected directly, coming out of the nuclear power plant. Once it goes through the transformer, straight to the data center, which, if that's not stupid, what the freak actually is? Oh. Would you be surprised if that place is surrounded by farms and communities and homes? Just almost all nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms, and uh, it's the worst thing you could do, right? Because they're hemorrhaging radiation twenty-four hours a day. It's expected to host a Bitcoin mining and cloud computing service. It's the first of its kind in the U.S. of A. Surrounded by farms. That's the one thing that all nuclear power plants and uh, reprocessing sites, um, like La Hague in France, the mixed oxide fuel, excuse me, mixed oxide fuel reprocessing facility, Surrounded by farms. And the reason that's important is because these are heavy emitters into our environment. The emissions are forever. They bioaccumulate every day, day after day for 80 years. And they never go away and it's never going to stop. The more you produce, more fuel you got, the more uh, splitting of the atoms is released into the environment all day, every day. There's a thousand fuel pools hemorrhaging radiation, invisible plumes into your environment that the dangers is so catastrophic, it's so dangerous. Uh, it's hard to imagine, it's hard to believe there's not riots in the streets over nuclear everywhere worldwide. It's hard to imagine that top nuclear executives are not uh, consistently executed or assassinated. It's, it's just... The evilness of the industry would dictate that no, under every, any other circumstance. They're so insulated, they capture your regulatory agencies, your universities, and your media's key positions in your government. Doesn't that sound like a cult? And the product is diseases and illnesses, not immune deficiencies and injuries, and 1800 catastrophic diseases, not just cancer. And the people that worked in incredible education that conceive this stuff could... This whole industry was flipped to build geothermal, we would have a wonderful future. You can never have a wonderful future because you had nuclear. You got to be worried about hitting the age of 60 because the nuclear industry is, is happy to sacrifice 60 and older. Should be prepared to die at the Fukushima plant. How do, how do we ever get to this point? How, how can you look any pro-nuclear person in the face and not be confused by evil? How, 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 how? How does that work? I'm so confused how anybody on the planet cannot be upset by a statement like that. Should 60 and older be prepared to die at the Fukushima plant? We got a poll tonight asking the question, and to our horror, our absolute horror, 30% of the people are suggesting that that's acceptable. At least that's what you want you to think. Imagine if you're, you know, your kids come home and say, Mom, you know, I think people 60 and older should go to Fukushima because we don't want to give nuclear industry a bad name. We can't sacrifice the young people. They've been faithful to Spider-Man and the Hulk and the Simpsons. They've done their, they done their duty. They supported the machine. That's what that's what's going on, isn't it? The nuclear fallacy. 
Why small modular reactors can't compete with renewable energy. Why small modular reactors can't compete with renewable energy. There's so many reasons. One. If you stay here, I was just kidding, man. Just you'll me. die. Relax. Relax, man. I just did. Do you know how it felt? I'm just funning you. <laughs> Oop. It's all gonna go bad. Everything go bang, bang. Everything go bang, bang. So, we got on um, the most important topic in human history, we got 17 people, bless your hearts. We got 28 votes on a poll. <laughs> so the pro-nuclear is out there spamming me. But 17 people on a show that I've been doing for a decade... And I don't even stutter, for goodness sake. Not that that's bad. How, how is that even possible that I can only have 17 people on my show? The industry is horrified. They have no one to pick on, right? You've got a thousand public relation firms vying to how they can fuck me over. Uh, They've got tons of them working directly at YouTube and Google that got control of the controls and can dictate what my counter says. For four years, I had 24,200 subscribers. Never lost a subscriber, never gained a subscriber for four years. And the interesting thing about me is uh, I don't fabricate anything. I don't misrepresent anything. I don't, I don't leave anything out. I provide an absurd, bizarre amount of documentation on top of that. 100% honest. Is that why they got me censored so much? Is that why they're terrified of reality? How many nuclear scientists rushed to send their parents to Fukushima is the question I would like to know. I like to see the bill for electricity for a nuclear power plant each year. Because they have to buy electricity to run a nuclear power site. The whole site. It's like a city, right? Get rid of the nuclear and just use the same coal, gas, oil, whatever you're using to produce the energy instead of the stupid nuclear. Nuclear, like a nuclear power plant is not about nuclear power. It's about the fuel cycle. From making the fuel so you can make bombs after. That's actually what they call, that's what they say. I'm not making this up. I never extrapolated this. This is their actual words. Why small modular reactors can't compete with renewable energies versus wind and solar. What about geothermal? What about geothermal? Renewable geothermal, in fact, they figured the market just for the drill bits for geothermal is going to be worth $50 billion over the next decade because everybody's starting to wake up and saying, oh, yeah, gee, I never thought about it. We got energy right under our feet. We don't need gas, oil, coal, or nuclear trains coming to our power stations. We just drill down and tap into 1,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, and that's the end of it. Because the nuclear industry doesn't want you to have a future. They, they don't want you to have a planet. They don't want you. Alive. They can't stand the birds and the animals and the mammals and the insects. Canadian watchdog. The nuclear industry calls themselves a watchdog. <laughs> it's, it's so... It's so far-fetched, but it's actual real. You can't believe it's real, and I understand that. I accept that. Canadian watchdog renews Camco's license for nuclear fuel facility in Port Hope. 
It should be in no hope. Not, they shouldn't call it port hope. It should be no hope. It's already an absurd disease factory. They've already had ob just hideous spills. They built the schools and the hospitals and the sidewalks and the malls with tailing from Camco's uranium, for goodness sake. And now they're going to give them a 20-year extension. Not going to. They gave them a 20-year extension to make fuel for reactors. And they got the arrogance, the hubris, to call themselves a watchdog. Uranium conversion facility in Canada is the only one in Canada. It's a, and Port Hope is a, feeds all the way into the fresh water supply for several million Canadians. The Canadian nuclear regulators. You can't, like, you can't call the Canadian or a nuclear regulator anywhere a watchdog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd like to get a 20 year extension. Where's that rubber stamp toe? Get it, hurry up the nuclear industry. Bless your heart. Oh, God, miss you. Nuclear industry. 1,650 tons of uranium is part of the new license. What was interesting about this was about three or four weeks ago, Camco stocks shot up, and nobody knew why. I guess now we know why, because they're getting a 20-year extension. That's not insider trading at all, Dana. No. Canada's nuclear regulators. Hopefully, in the future, the world comes to their senses to get the death penalty for what the genocide had already done to Canada. And this was a two-paragraph story. It took two people to write it. There's both paragraphs. And by Ismail Shakil and Stephen Shitferbrain Shearer, whatever the hell his name was. And this, this is a uranium fuel facility surrounded by houses and children's playgrounds and schools. You want to let them poison the communities for another 20 years? we got a problem in the nuclear... There's a, the biggest problem in the nuclear industry, we don't have any humans in there. there there's no evidence of a human working at... If they hired humans, this wouldn't happen, see? A fuel processing facility under fresh water surrounded by victims. And you can imagine these houses. And every one of these houses, there's heart problems and liver problems and lung problems and respiratory and pituitary and thyroid and adrenaline and Alzheimer's, dementia and autism, diabetes and Down syndrome is rampant there. <sighs> you ain't crazy compared to the nuclear industry. There's the head of the nuclear industry right there. Scumbag. What do we need? We we need we need a James Bond to take down the nuclear industry. Um, struggling here. What the hell? Oh, I see. Now we got it. Bond. James Bond. <laughs> Way to go, James. We need a James Bond. Weighing a nuclear threat, which is the entire nuclear industry, right? Even the Brookings Institute, Robert Kagan, who has yet to find a war he doesn't want the U.S. to fight. Like, why is somebody saying something like that? Mm. 
what have I got here to help you? I know. Hang on. I have a Patrick Clausen from the Washington Institute. I like using him to show you how the world actually works. So Patrick Clausen, the Brookings Institute is the same thing as Patrick Clausen. Now Patrick is going to speculate on how this current president, I think it was Obama in the administration at that time, can get us to war with Iran. And that if he can't, it's best if somebody else started the war. And he's going to take you through a history of what's known as false flags, of how America attacked themselves to blame it on the enemy so they can get to war with them. And he's going to, if you watch the whole interview, he'll suggest that's what you should do. Very short clip. I put the pictures in it to make it nice and pretty. I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. And it's very hard for me to see how the United States uh, president can get us to war with Iran. Some people might think Mr. Wilson wanted to get us into World War I. You may recall he had to wait for the Lusitania episode. Some people might think that Mr. Johnson wanted to send troops to Vietnam. You may recall he had to wait for the Gulf of Tonkin episode. Uh, we didn't go to war with Spain until the USS, uh, yes. until the Maine exploded. And may I point out that Mr. Lincoln did not feel he could call out the Federal Army until Fort Sumter was attacked, which is why he ordered the commander at Fort Sumter to do exactly that thing, which the South Carolinians had said would cause an attack. Uh, some people might think that Mr. Roosevelt wanted to get us into World War II, as David mentioned. You may recall we had to wait for Pearl Harbor. So if, in fact, the Iranians aren't going to compromise, it would be best if somebody else started the war. That doesn't scare the shit out of you. You haven't eaten for a couple of weeks. The Brookings Institute. i got to read that again. Even the Brookings Institution, Robert Kagan, who has yet to find a war he doesn't want the U.S. to fight. <clears throat> That's the most horrifying statement imaginable, folks. Iran has an obligation to give up its nuclear program, Saudi minister says, who's creating a nuclear program. At date, also unacceptable, but that's what America was doing. It's providing material, including drones and projectiles, missiles, projectiles, you know, missiles. In the same story. Put nuclear blackmail not must not prevent the liberation of Crimea and Ukraine. Because this is a proxy war. The U.S. through NATO is fighting a proxy war against Russia. We're not directly, you know, true Russia. Well, there is, but it's, it's indirectly American troops. They're doing it indirectly, and neither is NATO. NATO's not doing it directly. They're... Even though the air, the NATO countries are openly shipping the weapons to Ukraine, but not under the auspice of calling themselves NATO. But that's who they are. If they're part of the NATO country, they they can't go to war on their own. They're part of NATO, so they got to go to war. They declare war. War is declared against them. There's 28 militaries. If you look up NATO, it doesn't say 28 countries. It says 28 militaries. They were created in response to the Soviet Union. So when the Soviet Union was dissolved, the cowards, and I say that because they dissolved everybody's pensions in order to do that rather than let somebody fix it. It's revolting that that, that even happened. It's inhuman that something like that could happen. Putin's nuclear blackmail must not prevent the liberation. <sighs> Scientific basis needed for a 100-year nuclear plant lifetime, the Energy Secretary of the United States, Huff, says. They, they, they need a rubber stamp, is what she's saying. We need a rubber stamp. We need a rubber stamp. 
You wish to develop a series of scientific criteria that can be used to extend the operating lifetimes of a disease factory through the middle of the century. The Department of Energy lead nuclear power official said on Wednesday. Hanford officials tell DNF that the pretreatment system should hold up over the long run. Should hold up. Key parts of the pretreatment system. So they got a lot of nuclear waste. Okay, they got an absurd amount of nuclear waste in the 585 square mile nuclear wasteland known as the Hanford Renovation. Ren 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 Reservation. Key parts of now once they fire up this waste treatment and mobilization plant, they can't go back inside the building. That's why they're framing a narrative this way. Should hold up over decades because you can't go in and fix it. So the idea is to take the waste, put it in liquid glass and let it seal, and then store the glass in vaults deep underground. Department of Energy bosses. Now, Hanf this is a complicated story, so we'll get through this. I had to bring in a lot of supporting documentation. First, we've got to look at our poll. Official 311 notebook. Officials 311 notebook. Concern half of Japan to be covered in nuclear waste. Unfortunately, it was much worse than that. 60 and older should be prepared to die at the nuclear meltdown site. 60 and older. So I got a poll asking the question, is that acceptable? Apparently it is. Should the elderly be prepared to die at the Fukushima destroyed fuel pools and nuclear meltdowns? And when was the last time we seen an opposition at 31% in our polls? Quite a while ago. Only when we get these contentious polls which shouldn't be contentious at all. It's not like the headline is not real. June 13, 2014. Should the elderly prepare to die at the Fukushima destroyed fuel pools and nuclear meltdowns? I would hope there would be 100% no. A common sense would prevail. But to suggest there and in my poll that they should shows you the nuclear industry doesn't have a right to exist. It's confirmations. It's unequivocal confirmation that the industry doesn't have a right to exist. Put them on a plane and crash them into a mountain. Do something with them, but don't let them have any liberties. Okay, so Hanford considers a quicker way to clean up radioactive waste. This is 2022 story. I'm trying to build you a picture. For decades, Hanford was trying to build a multi-billion dollar complex to convert 56 million gallons of radioactive waste currently held in 177 huge underground tanks. It's in the ground so it can shield you from neutron bursts, the gamma shines and the x-rays into a benign glass. Uh, once again, right, and this thing they're billing is 50 something billion dollars. The, the waste that goes in, it comes out the other end in glass, but nobody can ever go inside the building once you fire it up forever. So how do you decommission it, I wonder? And if you can't go in the building, then the air is toxic. And how do you stop the air from leaving the building? There's another question. Okay, so, Hanford, these tanks that are in the ground is legacy waste from the Manhattan projects, the Cold War, and everything else. So they dumped this elixir of evil toxins, chemicals from the nuclear man-made anthropogenic radiation into tanks. Now what happens is this is stuff. Uh, you know, you have enough there to start a chain reaction. That's what's going to happen at the tanks. It's unbelievable caustic on top of that. So it starts settling down in the tanks. Now you got neutron bombardment taking place, and some of these tanks are going to have a chain reaction. 
and then that's going to cause the meltdown inside the tank. There's going to be a big hole in the tank, and the liquid is just going to hemorrhage into the soil, which everything is downhill to the Colombian River, which feeds the fresh water to millions of people and ultimately into the Pacific Ocean. It's, it's, it's complicated if you don't know the story, and I'm going to exp help you know the story. So first off, a lot of these tanks are empty because they've had a chain reaction in the bottom of the sludge. Caused a chain reaction, burned a hole in through it, and it lost its inventories in the tanks. A lot, and the tanks were built the last two years, 60 years ago. So a lot of the tanks would have been rushed through regardless. They were never, ever, under any circumstances, intended to last more than two years, officially. But as soon as they filled the tanks up, they, they, they stopped acknowledging that this had happened. The first of the three proposed classification, three, because you know they're going to break down, is supposed to go online in one, two and a half years, give or take a decade or three. Completions of the other two in one to two decades in the future. Maybe. Well, with their track record, well, remember, 90% of the money goes to administration, not to actual physical stuff. I, I'm not kidding, yeah? Uh, there, there's nothing to be gained by misrepresenting or, or not being honest with you. We can't have come up with solutions without the facts. And that's what I'm giving you. And they're startling. Completion the other two in one to two decades in the future. Uh, at least 40% of the 56 million gallons of radioactive fluid and chunks, fluids and chunks into a type of cement. So the time to save the money by grouting some of it. You can't grout this because of the Wigner effect will break down the grout and the glass. That's the problem. From the neutron bombardments, it will break down the integrity. Even if you put it in five uh, feet thick steel sarcophagus, the Wigner effect will eventually destroy it. Will grouting increase the dangers of the highly radioactive substances seeping into the ground? Seeping! I'll explain what seeping actually means to you coming up in a moment here. Seeping into the ground. Does anyone actually know how to safely mix Hanford's tank tank waste with grout? No. Increase the danger of highly radioactive substances seeping into the ground. I done the math on just a one incident at Hanford. During the first twenty years, Hanford nuclear production dumped four hundred and fifty billion gallons of radioactive liquid into the soil. Four hundred and fifty billion gallons. 450 billion gallons. So when you break down 450 billion gallons, you got that's 1.8 trillion liters is equal, divided by 1,000 liters to get a ton. It's 1.8 billion tons. And at 6 feet by 6 feet by 6 feet a ton, you're talking about 10,000 or 10 billion 800 million feet. Divide it by 5,000 feet to get miles. You got 2,160,000,000. 2, 2, miles. 2, miles divided by the circumference of the planet, which is 25 miles, the distance around the Earth. That's equal to 86 rows of one ton bags. A one ton bag is the same width as a car. So 86 rows of cars side by side, 86 wide wrapped around the entire planet from just a single incident at a single place in a single nuclear facility on planet Earth. And you can guarantee you that all the national laboratories done similar. You can guarantee you China and Russia and India and Pakistan and many other countries done the similar same thing, dumped it directly into the soil. A wall, that would be a wall of one ton bags, six feet wide, and each bag is a thousand liters, and a liter can kill everybody in McDonald's just walking past it every 20 minutes for a million years. It'd be six feet wide by 518 feet high, 
wrapped around the planet. So a wall, six feet wide, 518 feet wrapped around the entire planet. That's just one incident. That was dumped into the soil which ran into the Columbia River. There's places on the Columbia River where it was 70 sieverts an hour, which means that if you're fishing in the Columbia River and you drift past that place, you're getting a lethal dose that'll kill you in the next week or two or three. Just drifting past it. Three sieverts is a lethal dose. With a short exposure, you'll die within a couple of weeks. 70 sieverts is a catastrophic, and it's, it's evidence that it's much worse than that. But when you look at just a single incident where they dumped 450 billion gallons directly into the soil, <coughs> it's a struggle for good and evil tonight, I notice. The good has voted no. Should the elderly be prepared to die at the Fukushima destroyed fuel pools and nuclear meltdowns? Good is fighting back. We got 71%. Evil is up to 29%. Evil is so real, you don't know. But it destroys everything precious. That's what evil is only good at. And the nuclear industry meets the criteria for evil. So six feet wide nuclear waste, 518 feet tall around the entire planet Earth. But if you go to a pro-nuclear, they say all the nuclear waste can fit into a swimming pool. And who's in charge of the Hanford? The U.S. Department of Energy. Can you imagine how actually evil they really are? You'd be surprised. Hanford cleanup cost to triple. It could be up to 677 more billion dollars. You're not gonna clean Hanford up with a lousy three quarters of a trillion dollars. You will bankrupt America and you still can't clean up Hanford. You can't get back what you already lost into the, the uh, Columbia River. And if you went down to the big cities and farms, and, and there's 25,000 acres of farms just down the road from Hanford. 25,000 acres of prime farmland. And they have uh, serious weather events down there too. Feds double down on ill Hanford workers. I put this one in there because I want you to understand how bad nuclear actually is and how bad Hanford actually is. To qualify for the ease compensation rules at Hanford, workers only need to employ at a work area at Hanford for a single eight-hour shift. If you work for eight hours at Hanford, you're entitled to a pension. Most other workers worldwide and in the state bear the burden of proof to show that they got sick or the illnesses and injuries was a direct result of a Pacific workplace incident to receive workers' compensation. But to qualify at Hanford, you're going to, you've got to prove that you worked there for eight hours. And 20, 30 years later, you got sick. You don't have to prove it because of Hanford. You just got to prove you worked at Hanford, and by proxy, it's assumed you got sick because of Hanford, which is 500, 585 square miles. Yay, we got a caller. We got Michael Schell from Ontario. You're about to go live. I to turn down, turn down my radio. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't work with me in the background, I noticed. <laughs> it's you, You'll hear it breaking up. On, it sounds like it's breaking up on my side, right? Oh, uh, sure, 
I call back? No, you're fine. Go ahead. All right. Uh, so you're speaking for a very good truth tonight, and, uh, you know, not that you normally don't. Yeah, go ahead, Michael. Are you there? Uh, I appreciate what you're doing, and, uh, you know, you're uh, right on time with some of your points tonight. And I, I just want to fun support you. Uh, mutations like jellyfish babies and radioactive tests. Well, there's, like you said, there's 1,800 diseases, see? If you looked at nuclear power plants and start looking at heart problems within a 50 square mile and lung problems and, and um, diabetes and Alzheimer's dementia, you would see this absurd catastrophic numbers. Instead, they only acknowledge cancer, which is latent. It might, you know, a lot for a lot of people, it's not going to show up until the, the nuclear plant is close to the end of its life, right? And... Uh, they don't even acknowledge uh, leukemia, you know, because uh, it's too hard for them to handle. But when the baby shows up with three years, then they, then they notice. The streets in India full of deformed children. Extra arms, double heads, you name it. Streets and streets. I mean... Because they dump it into the local are, drinking water in that particular area for decades, and they've poisoned the entire population. Go go ahead, Mike. And and these are these are these are noticeable, you know. And I'm not in India. I mean, I'm not in Ontario. But when they start uh, reporting because they have to, the hospital results of newborn babies, you know, in Ontario, and they start reporting results like that, then people will wake up, and then. It's obviously too late. I mean, autism and Down syndrome and bipolar, a.k.a. schizophrenia. Yeah, we have, we have those. Right, it's skyrocketed, see? Particularly in places with a lot of reactors like Ontario. Okay, uh, Mike, uh, I'm going to let you go unless you have right. something else you want to throw out there. i got a lot to get through yet. Uh, thank okay. you very much for being you. Yeah, you're welcome, my friend. Thank you. You have a good night now. Good night. Yeah. Bye-bye. You can call in to show at 709-589-4406. 709-589-4406. We got a poll tonight. Should the elderly be prepared to die at the Fukushima nuclear meltdown? Eight fuel pools have melted down. And each fuel pool is full of decades of reactor cores. And four reactors melted down, not three. Reactor four also melted down. So eight fuel pools, and most likely the common spin fuel pool, which would have had reactor fuel from all six reactors melted down, it was behind reactor four. Reactor four, reactor three was right alongside of it. They were completely got it through de absurd detonations it seems and the pictures we got from it were all redacted why would you redact it if there's nothing wrong see and what kind of society sits in silence and thinks this is acceptable should 16 older should be prepared to die at the nuclear meltdown why, why would you want that on your planet Why, oh, why, oh, why would anybody want that on our planet? Hanford cleanup cost triple. So uh, they're talking at least another $677 billion, but because 90% of the money goes to administration and because they hire their own constantly, they need all the money for administration. The actual workers only get 10% uh, of the money. And if you work for eight hours at Hanford, you can get a pension. Because, you know, nuclear is so clean and green, too cheap to meter. 
Hanford, severe weather alert. So do you have these severe weather alerts around Hanford? Do you really think that doesn't wash everything into the Hanford River? Which feeds millions of people from the farms down river and there's millions of people drinking from it and children play in it in the spring and summer and, f and then it goes all the way to the Pacific Ocean. You really think none of this is on purpose. You think all of this is a complete coincidence. Those that have in-ground sprinkler systems should drain them and cover above ground pipes to prevent them from freezing. You really think this is not going to happen at Hanford? Is this going to happen to the civilians? Because the industry would definitely try to get you to believe something like that. To prevent freezing and possibly twisting, burning, busting of outdoor water pipes. If it happens at Hanford, it's a catastrophic event. Currently, we have a... Tritium introduced infusion experiment in Sandina. Tritium. Uh, tritium gets used in nuclear weapons to double or quadruple the explosive power of a nuclear weapon by just introducing the harmless tritium, what they call harmless. We're talking, the tritium we're talking about is 3H, it's man-made. It's not like tritium, the natural tritium, which is not very much of it on, on the planet. We surpassed it in the first decade. We dwarfed all natural tritium in the environment. And I mean dwarfed it. So Sandina Ion Beam Laboratory reopens after a tritium incident. So if tritium is harmless, why was it closed? And this was a story from 2023. That's today's story. Again, I, I got to ask the question. You can see I'm being spammed by the nuclear industry because 32% of the people is suggesting that the elderly should be prepared to die at Fukushima. So it's not just a hyperbole. It's an actual headline, by the way. So you can put up all the windmills you want. That's fine, but why wouldn't you do geothermal? It's cheaper. It's right. Wind and solar should be next after geothermal. Hey, we got James Lucy calling in. Um, hang on, James. There you go. And James is in your comments section, folks, in case you're wondering. Good night, James. How are you, sir? Uh, no, I, I wanted to call in because I, I wanted to apologize. I accidentally screwed up on the, <laughs> on the poll. Oh, you accidentally hit yes? Uh, I'm you sure know, a few I, people did. But I, I literally looked at it like, this is a trick question. <laughs> like, obvi obviously, if you're going to have the elderly next to the spent fuel pools, of course they got to prepare to die. Oh, I see, yeah. You know, that's, that's how I look Oh, at yeah, it. So good I, point. You know, I, that's a good point. <laughs> I never thought about it that yeah, way. Know, that's hilarious. I got to... Uh, I mean, I think, I think Colette actually commented earlier tonight. She, she said something similar to like, yeah, I got confused with that too, so... Oh, wow, eh? I think, I, I, think, <laughs> I, I, think I, don't, I don't think the nuclear industry is really pounding us tonight. I think it's just a lot of us screwed up. Well, good, that's, that's Sorry, good. No. That's just, yeah, no, it never <laughs> crossed my mind, and normally I'm thinking, right? And we were saying that when we put up the poll, that people might accidentally, but not because of that, right? Because they naturally are used to voting yes. Right. <laughs> Which would probably be yeah, a problem. Yeah, yeah. I well, forgot. I forgot about that. it. But I. I <laughs> so that's two. Two. I, I, I just, go ahead, James. I'm sorry. No, I, I just want. I don't want to. I don't want to take too much time. But I just wanted to. I just wanted to bring up. I had this conversation with someone today about nuclear energy and uh you know this is someone who has been getting really sick they've been getting COVID a lot uh, they've been triple boosted whatever they can't figure out what's going on 
you know, and I, it's, I not, it's not funny, I know, but go ahead. Yeah. So I just try to bring it up casually, like, you know, we got this ongoing meltdown. There's an ongoing meltdown yeah. still happening. Yeah. And you got to... You know, this is, this is like, this, this, I mean, talk about the elephant in the living room. It's gotten so big, Dana. This elephant is so big that it... it, it you can't even see it from space anymore. And and it's like, you know, it's hard to be the crazy person in the room. <laughs> you don't want to bring it up. You know yeah. what I mean? And I know. Like, oh, know, yeah. I know, man. Trust me. <laughs> and you, you just have to be so stoic. And I know there's only, what, last I count, there's 17 people watching the show. or 8 billion people on Earth. And, you just, and I just have to, I just have to have that that spirit feeling that like we're not wrong no. I mean, we all have to support Dana I mean Dana you have no idea I mean National Geographic should be so embarrassed humiliated you with your footage thank you have done. I mean it's got to come to play someday someday it's, we're all going to be so proud of you Dana I, 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 think know, I feel it every, yeah. I, I really do feel it I really no do. we we, we anyway, don't that's why I want we, 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 thank you. No, yeah. we we done the right thing. We we have the moral high ground. That's yeah. there. There is no if ands or buts about that. We we got the moral high ground, and we're not doing this because it's easy or because it's hard. We're doing it because we have to. We have an obligation. We're in the know, and and we're doing a bit. And we're you know we're authentic. We've been at this so long, right? That. We got good at it, unfortunately, telling a horrible yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, no, I appreciate oh, well, this. Is such an amazing. It's so amazing you know, to to be in this wide time right now. To to see yeah. all this coming on to, to come, because I mean, yeah, I know there's a lot of great things coming forward. So I'm I'm behind you. It We're is. All behind it you, is. So. I yeah. No, I, I I know. Thank you, James. Appreciate that, my friend. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Dan. Love you so much. Yeah. All right. Good night. Yeah, good night, good night, James. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant points, right? Super important points. You know, they're not censoring me because I'm wrong. And they're not censoring me because they're proud of themselves. They're, they're, they're ashamed of themselves. They don't want their family to find me. They don't want their children to find my programs. Or, you know, I should call it our programs, right? It only exists because... As a team, we make it exist. It's, it's an impossible job, what we're doing. It's impossible. Just to make it this far, just to tell the story a single time, is, is so many obstacles. And uh, I dedicated everything, you know. I sacrificed everything myself in order to try to keep the story alive and to make sure the story would stay fresh, that each day... and. It goes way back to the fact that we had always, the idea of the live stream was that if you find this live stream this, in this, you know, ocean of shit, so to speak, of disinformation, you, if, you, if you finally found this site, you know, you know it, it took place today. And that why why are people talking about it today? Because it, it must be important, and maybe that would give them pause. And we see all this shiny, beautiful setup, and they say, "Well, maybe I'll listen to this crazy guy, this guy who's who's um, giving me a narrative I never heard before." And all of a sudden, they're brain goes clickety click and they wake up like James and, and you and so many others and come to the realization that you know you got to pick a side at some point what 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 is you know when you look in the mirror what are you going to remember each day right that you you went to war against the evilness and why the rest slept that's nothing to be ashamed of. Win, lose, or draw, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's everything to be proud of. Pro, uh, pro nuclear is something that 
I would imagine if you're pro-nuclear, you're ashamed of yourself. If you're pro-nuclear, you're incredibly superficial. And that you're empty. And this is what we see from the uh, interaction with the pro-nuclear community is this emptiness, this blankness, this zero personality. They don't have anybody in the industry that the world uh, says, hey, that's a pretty good person, right? They don't have anybody, they don't have that capacity. They can have the most char you know, charismatic person on the planet, but uh, they won't have that. They won't have that. Um, there's a word for it that I can't even remember the proper word for it. My apologies, because uh, and that's a great point James brought up and Colette. Should sixty and older be prepared to die at uh, fuel pools and nuclear meltdowns? Well, in one sense, of course, right? But what they were saying was they should sacrifice the 60 and older. And I should have, when you only got 100 uh, letters for your poll, it's hard. I don't know how to frame it so that people won't misinterpret it. I, would, I assume most of the normal, regular people would have remembered this headline because I do, but I should never assume stuff like that. Because that bothers me at night times, right? A lot of this stuff comes back and haunts me when I'm sleeping, trying to sleep, when I wake up. I never get any peace ever. There's never no peace. I can never find peace. Uh, the only peace I get is when I'm live, <laughs> telling, trying to warn the world, because it's, I have to go back into the cesspool, cesspool of, of news to get ready for the next presentation or show, whatever you want to call it. And the whole idea is to warn this planet, is to fight. I'm the Johnny Appleseed of the nuclear industry. Yay. The Pru incident required a crew to enter the reactor building to fix the heavy water leak. It's here in New Brunswick, Canada. Um, in 2011, they had to do the same thing. The crew went inside the reactor and all this kind of a uh, fake, stupid, uh, useless protect so-called protective gear that can't protect you you need you need four feet of thickness between you and the emissions right but anyway they went into the reactor and the same reactor and they couldn't get the doors open to get back out they got stuck in there for two hours which is a catastrophic event and they downplayed every facet of it Utilities says all radiation protection procedures and dose limits for staff for staff were met. That's a cold response, eh? Instead of saying, well, we gave them all a million dollars so they can retire and live out the rest of their life and just try to take, gave them free health care for the rest of their life so they can try to have a normal life after experiencing something like that. A leak of heavy water... At the Point Lepore nuclear generating station, a leak, a leak, a leak. Think about that, because the reactors are running at 12, 1400 PSI. And that the leak they were talking about was half the size of a garden hose. But a garden hose, a typical house garden hose, can produce 130 tons a day. So that's not a leak, that's a catastrophic event. So half the thickness of it, say let's say 60 tons a day. That's an absurd amount. That's not an environment humans should go into. They sent in three people with plastic suits and respirators. That's not going to protect you from gamma shines, x-rays, and neutrons. A leak about the incident... Three authorized, nobody's authorized and qualified. Just because you're authorized don't mean, and you're so-called qualified don't mean you're safe. A plastic suit don't make you safe in a nuclear environment, for goodness sakes. We're outfitted, but this is how they coerce somebody into going into the environment so the utility doesn't poison the planet. To enter the reactor containment building where an unknown amount, it's, Four weeks later, an unknown, still an unknown amount of heavy water, radioactive water, escaped 
from the tube about half the width of a household garden hose. So 60 tons a day. Uh, but the problem is, it's at, you know, over a thousand PSI we're talking about. So it's not like a garden hose at all, because a garden hose is like 30 PSI. It was stopped manually by crimp crimping the tubing and took 30 minutes to crimp the tubing. This is a terrible situation for a human. All safety precautions were taken. Well, first off, there is no safety precautions you can take for that environment. You can pretend that you're safe, but that's what you're doing. You're pretending it. It's right on the ocean. The disgusting Bay of Fundy is destroyed because of them. A pair of events at the nuclear plant last week forced the generator offline indefinitely with no clear explanation yet of what exactly has happened. Well, this is standard in the nuclear industry, by the way. All radiation protection procedures and dose limits for the staff were met but no, but like you don't even know what happened. How can you claim it was meant when you don't know what happened? You can't quantify an assertion that way. The official account have been light on details and no mention of a crew needing to enter the reactor building to manually fix a leaking pipe on top of it. The volume of heavy water involved is unclear. So th there's a whole lot of blanks in this equation. Why? A partial loss of power to the station, which means, because the nuclear power stations run on external power. And two, there's two dedicated gas oil coal plants to supply the nuclear plant with power because it can't run on its own power. So it's, st it's stupid. It's the very definition of stupid. Why don't we use a gas coal oil plant to back up wind and solar? If you're going to do it for nuclear, why not do it for wind and solar? It was running at full capacity. <laughs> Later, it was discovered the heavy water was leaking, leaking at a thousand PS plus PSI from a point. That's not leaking. Le leak, like whatever's coming out of a thousand PSI will probably cut you right in two. That's not a leak. From a pipe inside the reactor building. You know, do you got any idea how many pipes are inside of a reactor building? It'll blow you away. Miles and miles and miles and miles. It was discovered heavy water was leaking from a pipe inside the reactor building. According to Couture, it is still unclear whether the two events are connected to each other or coincidental. So there's not a few questions wanting there. All the questions are unanswered. It is not radioactive, but can be contaminated with tritium. Well, tritium is radioactive. It can't just be tritium. They say that, that only tritium is escaping. Uh, I find it hard to accept that with this legacy of deceit and dishonesty that they have. And every turn, every, every, every paragraph of every story is full of lies. And that's what we do here. We, we painstakingly, excruciatingly challenge the lies in order to try to paint the picture of how dishonest nuclear and journalists and academics and universities actually are. And it's symmetrical. Unfortunately, it's symmetrical throughout the entire universe of the industries. Tritium can be hazardous if ingested or inhaled. Um, the, the whole reactor site is bombarded by neutrons. So normally 90% of the site is declared radioactive during decommissioning because the neutron bombardment affects the entire site, not just the reactor fuel containment units itself. 
So it's very dishonest in what they're saying. It's very, very, very unbelievably dishonest. And a lot of people uh, that work in the industry are, are complacent and buy into the narrative without, you know, without they don't have a natural way to resource it. Whether, and they don't see a reason to. They they put their fate blind. They put blind fate in it because it's a good paying job. When it is running, it's not, but it's not a good job, but it's a good paying job. It's not a good job. When it is running, the Lepur heat transfer port system circulates something under 200,000 liters of heavy water at high pressure. At high pressure. At 1,200 pounds per square inch. I I'm pretty sure that qualifies as high pressure. So to say the pipe is leaking when it's 1,200 PSI is a pretty bloody dishonest. And that's the industry, though. The minute you see the word leaking in a nuclear power plant, get your pets and your children and run. How much heavy water escaped before that happened has not been calculated. Well, I can calculate it. 2,000 PSI at 60 tons a day. For a garden hose, how much at two thousand at twelve hundred router psi? If thirty psi is one hundred and thirty tons, one hundred and forty tons a day, how much is it at twelve hundred psi? I wonder. There were elevated levels of airborne tritium from the heavy water spill. Spill, it's not spilling. It's at twelve hundred psi. Not leaking is 1,200 PSI. 1,200 PSI per square inch, I might add. Wearing protective plastic suits. These are not protective suits. There's the illusion. Independent air supplies for safety. Is absurdness. Radiation survey instrumentation is with them. What do you got that for? If it's not an, uh, now there's not going to be good uh, survey instruments either. They're not going to give them real instruments because they're not going to go in there when you see the numbers. All radiation protection procedures and dose limits for the staff were here or heard to during the work, she said, the spokesperson, who's the least likely to be believable. The incident caused problems when the airlock door malfunction could not be opened for two hours with the crew cleaning the spill inside. <laughs> it took 30 minutes to crimp the pipes and you're stuck in there now for another two hours. Don't worry, you get the same doses of banana. Have a nice day. Now, if you're at Hanford, you work for eight hours, you get a pension for the rest of your life. If you put Lepur nuclear power plant, you go into an in adverse conditions you don't even get extra lunch time. Lawmaker seeks more testing for school, because we covered that, it kind of slipped out of the, because they basically abandoned the school now, that turned out to be in a nuclear wasteland. How many of these stories have we covered over the years? It's, it's, it's absurd, isn't it? So the poll tonight, apparently, and I agree, is confusing. It shouldn't be to our regular people, but it is, unfortunately. I think it's just the way I framed it. I'm too good. Uh, this is not going to work. Let's try this again. Don't worry. Technical difficulties. I'll get there. We got this. Should the elderly be prepared to die at Fukushima destroyed fuel pools and nuclear meltdowns? We got 100% no because people got confused and accidentally voted yes. So that's, I call that a success. That's a win for us. Now that we sorted it out, we understand that I'm too good at the polls or what I write. Uh, how should I put that? Should Japan... Was Japan right to consider sacrificing people 60 and older at the nuclear meltdowns? 
<clears throat> I should have f uh, framed it like that, I guess. I never considered, see, that it would be mistaken. And that's actually a, a mistake. That's really unusual. I'm glad that I got sorted out. Because I'm capable of making mistakes. I'm just really cautious not to. Because the industry likes to chop it up and then string it together and, and clip old new videos together and try to make me look stupid. And you can make anybody look stupid if you try, right? Just start chopping away at the video. And people buy into it, right? I've been attacked forever by the industry. They can attack me all they want. They're just going to solidify my resolve. They're not going to drive me away. That's for sure. They're not going to influence anybody with a brain. That's for sure. I got no idea what I'm doing here. Let me see. What do we got going on here? Yeah, we need more bombers. That'll fix global warming, right? Dancers. That'll fix global warming. Let's get some dancers. That, that'll solve everything. They can go into the nuclear meltdown and dance the problems away. IAEA up support for small modular reactors. The International Atomic Energy up support for reactors that don't even exist. We need them, Dana, for climate change. The A-10 Warthog shoots a ton and a half of the dirty bombs a minute. A ton and a half of dirty bombs every minute. It only uses depleted uranium dull ram. It's contaminated with everything. Because, like, we know it's got technetium-99, for instance, in it, which you're going to get from chain reactions that are unmitigated. Everything is crazy. I screwed up the pole tonight. That's allowed. I'm allowed to make mistakes, too. Not very happy about it. This was only supposed to be an hour and ten minutes show tonight, by the way. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. New type of entanglement lets nuclear physicists see inside the atomic nucleoid. And so the first thing I'm always looking for is who's behind this. Uh, the U.S. Department of Energy. Oh, the people that runs Hanford. Oh, the Brookhaven National Laboratory. Brookhaven in New Jersey. <laughs> They're so evil, they only come out at night. Look, Ma, I got a job in the nuclear industry. I'm a good guy, said the scumbags. Brookhaven National Laboratory. We need to give them some loving. Uh, 1997, Brookhaven lab shut after accident kills a worker. I'm going to paint you a little picture of Brookhaven. Stressing the importance of safety at the laboratory, which has recently come under strong criticism because of leaks of radioactive material. Strong criticism because of leaks. They, they're on one of the biggest aquifers in New York, on top of that. It's completely contaminated because of Brookhaven. Mr. Penna said he was ordering the shutdown to impress on all the employees that they share a responsibility in ensuring safety at the laboratory. They shut it down this one facility because it was just contaminated all the neighborhoods. There's endless, there's hundreds of millions of dollars of lawsuits in the neighborhood because people dying of cancers and all kinds of diseases around Brookhaven. Uh, big man Thursday. So this is 2019. Brookhaven lab employees with an S file lawsuits over exposure to toxic chemical. See, they should have worked at uh, Hanford. All they got to do is work for eight hours and they can get a pension. Joe Marino worked in the lab for two years 
lost a kidney to cancer. You're lucky he got away with just losing a kidney. 38 employees died from cancer. And that each lawsuit, individual lawsuit, is seeking $25 million in compensation for years of hardship and suffering. Not only that, they contaminated the biggest aquifer in New York with absurd radioactive material. They closed down the reactor. Seven exposed to radiation in um, Brookhaven's laboratory accident. And look who wrote the article. Our old nemesis, evilness rather, Matthew Wall. What a, what a disgusting, horrific parasite he turned out to be, didn't he? Equipment for a complicated physics experiment caught fire earlier this morning, releasing radiation inside and outside a nuclear reactor, which means the whole neighborhood got radiated. Right? The only thing that caused an event like that is a serious event. And Brookhaven is not a very friendly neighbor. So it would have contaminated New York, Waterbury, Providence, Worcester, Catskill, uh, Northeastern Philadelphia. You can see what I'm talking about, let alone that whole peninsula. And that's a huge aquifer right there, folks. And they had many other accidents. It's a 21 square mile nuclear wasteland in the middle of communities and cities. One great big stupid disease factory. Brookhaven National Laboratory staffed by approximately 2,750 degenerate scumbag scientists, engineers, technicians, and useful idiots and hosts 4,000 idiot guest investigators, investigators, scumbags like the rest of them. It has its own police station, its own fire department, its own zip code. Oh, and it studies climate research. <laughs> Nuclear doesn't know how to do anything unless it's evil. Their first question, is this going to be evil? And they're like, yeah, okay, well, we're in. Well, I haven't told you what we're doing. It's okay, it's evil, right? Yeah, we're in, man. He lost his contract in the wake of two incidences for a rea one reactor. A 1994 fire at the facility's high flux beam reactor exposed several workers and reported in 1997 of a treaty. Why, why is it whenever a nuclear power plant has an accident, the only thing that's released is tritium? You know, Three Mile Island took them two years to boil off the radioactive water, they claimed only had tritium in it. This is water they poured over the melted reactor core, and the only thing left was tritium. And then when they had the next meltdowns, year, decades later, the only thing coming out of it was tritium. Every time we hear of a nuclear accident, the only words to talk about is tritium. And by the way, they'll say tritium is natural. And these are all of these people that say that should be arrested and incarcerated at hard labor for the rest of their lives. If I heard the word tritium, I want to kick the shit out of a nuclear scientist. The, the brainwashing is stunning. The amount of work that they put in the brainwashing is... If they put any of this energy into being miserable, and disease factories and, and try to create geothermal energy we wouldn't have any problems, would we? They got no money for geothermal, they got all the money in the world to kill you with. Seven exposed to radiation US laboratory accidents. Might have reached the public were far too small to measure, equivalent to a few minutes of natural background radiation. This is Matthew Walls claiming that the releases from the reactor were no harm more harmful than natural, everyday, stupid, harmless, irrelevant background um, and Matt, Matthew Walsh has been doing this cover story, that's all he does for a living is tell the lies and he's been doing it for uh, 30 something years. 
That's his, that's his, he got became a journalist just to tell these lies because of his who his family worked in the industry too. See. Uh, the spokesperson said we sent them home to sleep. The seven people who were highly contaminated. Sure. At the disease factory known as the Brookhaven National Laboratories. When the authorities discovered it has been leaking. I just like want to pull somebody's fingers off for typing that. The nuclear reactor was used for more than three decades. So it's a serious disease factory. And like, so if you look at the studies, academic studies that were done on uh, experimental low megawatt reactors, a megawatt is power in a thousand homes. And so these reactors were talking about 10, 15, 25 megawatts, which is actually a big reactor. And they're not for power, they're for experiments in universities and government agencies, and as, but they're actual disease factories. But even in the circumference of them, when they do a, a, uh, a, a sex ratio study, because that's how they define out uh, how much leaking is going on, they'll do a sex ratio study if there's more males than females being born, in every one of these studies is what they were showing. Now, why did they look for that in the first place? Because they, they're they all hemorrhaging radiation all the time into the environment. And so the only way you can look, do a study of the sex ratio is if everybody gets poisoned. And so if everybody's poisoned, then you can do a sex ratio study. So they know everybody's being poisoned because they're doing sex ratio studies. and. The sex ratio studies after Chernobyl suggested everybody in Europe was poisoned. Of course it was. We know that because they closed 9,400 farms in Ireland and Scotland and the United Kingdom after Chernobyl. Well, you can't contaminate 9,400 farms in Ireland and Scotland and the UK, United Kingdom without contaminating all the farms and drinking water in Europe. It's an industry that if you don't get rid of it, it'll get rid of you and every species on the planet, and that's what we're seeing happening. Said that the decision to close it was based largely on economics, but it wasn't. It had been prohibited by con Congress from restarting the reactor for the last three years. They got to spend $23 million a year just to keep the reactor on standby. Yeah, the, the industry is nothing but a burden to humanity. Atoms of uranium-235, a natural but unstable. Well, 235 is induced by the chain reaction, right, in order to keep the chain reaction, the neutrons, because it splits, and the neutrons is what they're after. So Matthew Waltz claiming that it's a natural it's not natural in this environment. It, it, there is some natural uranium-235, but that's not what's coming out of a chain reaction. That's uh, induced. Experiments were conducted with the reactor to help create a number of drugs used to treat bone cancer. Now, they've been doing this since the beginning of time with the nuclear industry. So ra radon, there used to be this radon drink, and people would drink, it was a bottle uh, um, it was a it was a handmade and then baked pottery, and you would pour your water in there. When the water was radioactive, you would drink it. The only problem was people's jaws would come off from the radiation. They would die from incredible. They were covered in sores, and they would die. Right, and so they had to take that eventually off the market. But just they sold a lot of it. And a lot of people drank it, and they didn't know why they died back in those days. But they, they used the radon to make lipstick for children and, and for women. They used the radon to make eyeshadow and makeup for the women. They used uh, the radon for toothpaste, for uh, so, uh, soaps, for repository, or... Uh, 
for so many applications, it's, it defy, and he knew it was harmful. Again, when you're making this stuff for the female population, you're attacking that population, see? They knew what they were doing. Uh, they used it allegedly to try to immediately, and every time they create something new in the nuclear industry, they go looking for people that are dying to get them to get them to sign a piece of paper saying if you die from the treatment, you can't family can't sue us. And then they murder them with the radiation. And studies were showing, two point three percent of Australians and two point four percent of Americans lived longer with the radiation therapy than without it, or lived more than five years, I should say. Only two, a little over 2% did. The rest of them died. Their quality of life was immediately destroyed. And poll uh, was repeated in 2007, or not the poll, but the study, with the same results. And the question was asked, why are we murdering everybody with radiation in the hospitals for it? And that it also said that you're better off not to take the radiation so-called therapy because your quality of life wouldn't denigrate the way it, it does immediately with the radiation, of course, which induces all hair loss by killing, trying to kill all the cells in your body and hope to get the cancer. They can do the same thing with cyanide, can't they? It's absurd. And yet that's the standard... They'll steal your children. The nuclear industry changed the laws so that if your child gets diagnosed with cancer and you won't let them radiate the child, they'll take the child, put them in the hospital under police guard and radiate the child. When the child is finally dying, they'll send the child home. because They don't want the hospital staff to suffer too much. I used to live in this community where the fourth floor of the hospital was for radiation. And they, they always had this saying, this macabre saying that uh, if you're in the hospital and they're going to try to send you to the fourth floor, you should fight with everything you got not to end up on the fourth floor because nobody comes back. So it was used to radiation to treat cancer, bone cancers, and other elements, heart problems, liver problems, all the stuff, you know, created by the nuclear industry in the first place. The 5,300-acre Brookhaven National Laboratory in Upton, New York, has already been identified as an environmental problem and declared a super fun cleanup site, a super fun multi-billion dollar cleanup site in a neighborhood on top of the biggest aquifer supplying that whole peninsula. The disconnect, and we cover it all the time, I just can't wrap my mind around the disconnect of this planet. Leaking tritium, the arrogance, the absurd arrogance to even mention the word tritium in this context is astounding. It's been dealing with pesticide, and then, then suggest a pesticide contamination of the groundwater and chemical solvent contamination to its southwest, which are true too, right? Because the industry is not just a little bit evil, it's, it's committed to its evilness. The slow spread of radioactive tritium, again, mentioning tritium, is dis it's despicable. A report found Brookhaven National Laboratory sometimes sacrificed safety in the name of science. Well, that's not science anymore now, is it? At the report cited the laboratory for failing to respond to the discovery of tritium levels as far back as 1986. Do you really think it wasn't pre-86? With the legacy that we've... You know, it's said that the lab did a delayed on promises to install monitoring wells that would have detected the problem before 1996. And all it is, they're dig holes. This is what allegedly was going to the tanks for the first couple of years of Fukushima, was the well water. And then they changed the narrative and said, no, 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 
nothing is going in the ocean. It's all going into the tanks. If you don't understand that story, I've done two dedicated presentations on the tanks at Fukushima in the last two weeks, one in the last few days. And if you watch either one of them, there's zero possibility that you won't be a better person for it and that you won't understand the reality. Now, the institution is ran by the Associated Universities, a nonprofit group runs Brookhaven, folks. Try wrapping your mind around that one. And they're doing that so there's no liability. That had administrated it, the lab since it opened was replaced by the Brookhaven Science Associates, led by the State University of New York at Stony Brook. And I screwed up the poll tonight. I apologize to anybody for the confusion. I know it gets confusing around here as it is, so. I'm glad that got sorted out. Well, that's it for us tonight. <laughs> the last show of the week was a good one. TEPCO wanted to send in people 60 years of age and over to die and should be prepared to die. I screwed up the poll. Those 60 and older should be prepared to die. Like, because they, like, you know, when I, I was doing it in good faith, I think about this a lot because I, you know how many times I've covered this over the years, just thousands and thousands of times. It, it's just this contempt, right, that the industry has for life. And so I'm not, I'm not going to claim to be perfect. I'm far from it. I'm pretty darn good, though, when it comes to nuclear and bananas. It's like how, that's what media has been doing to you for 80 years, lying to you and laughing at you and, and reveling in it. Let's do a shout-out, I guess, for everybody, because it's the last show of the week. I still only got 17 people on my show. That's absurd, isn't it? I got 50 votes, and I got 17 people on my show. <laughs> That's a wonderful time to be alive. I'm going to end the poll on a wonderful 49 votes, but a whole bunch of confusion. Got 100% of people said no. Despite the fact they didn't know it, they said no. Confusion, hopefully was all we're seeing there. And I'll try not to do that to you again the next time <laughs> when we when we, uh, when we cover that poll type again, right? Let's do a shout out anyway, we'll call it because this is the weekend for me. We're going to get snow tomorrow, next day, the day after, and the day after blowing winds good time good times are coming don vincent blue jay outpost albert skewilla good night everybody daryl murray thank you dana nasana good night dana james lucid stepped up again thank you james sent a paypal awesome james you're amazing. Uh, Vast Thinker, good night, everybody. Hugs for everybody. I'm just gonna, Jeff Poor, I'm shooting up through the names. Looking, quick shout out for those. I know Stephen Young was there earlier. Hi, Stephen, if you're still out there. I hope you're doing better, my friend. I know you're probably not. But I hope you are. Ain't Chester and Patrick. And 
I know Colette S is out there somewhere. John Curtis. We're almost through. James Appleton. We're almost through this. Uh, Richard. Yes, yeah, some some of the polls are pretty confusing. Absolutely. It's not easy to do the things I'm doing, right? And then do the polls. It's very. The preambles are really hard. There's so much work goes into everything. I'm bound to make mistakes. I try not to, obviously, but I slip up like everybody else. Yeah, good night, everybody. Have a great night. Great weekend. Hopefully there's nothing major happens the weekend. If there is, I'll be back. If not, I won't. If you made it this far, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. We got 39 likes and 16 people on the show. Not censored at all. <laughs> it's a compliment, right? It ain't gonna stop us. We know the difference. But imagine how desperate they are that they're doing that to this live show, right? Imagine how desperate the industry actually is. Hugs to everybody else that didn't comment. They're watching this now and later. I apologize. I don't always remember to shout out to you folks. It's not that I don't think of you. Not that I don't wonder, because I do. It's just I'm overloaded and it gets past me. Have a great night, great weekend. We'll see everybody on Sunday night. Sunday night, we'll be back curb stomping the scumbag nuclear industry in overdrive. If you've got the time, we'll be here. Hugs for everybody. We'll see everybody soon enough. Take care, folks. Fire!